Hello and welcome back to Nordy's Forgotten Flicks. Yes, today we're going back to the wonderful year of 2002, where punk rock ruled the world, every movie was trying to be the Matrix, and teenagers given the power of a god wouldn't lead to the destruction of Seattle. And in March of that year, Nickelodeon movies gave us the Jonathan Frank science fiction comedy, Clock Stoppers. Let me tell you about the time I first saw this movie. It was during the summer, my parents rented it off pay-per-view, we ordered a pizza, and I watched it three times in a row. No shit, three times back to back to back. It had an awesome premise, and it was completely wrapped up in that era of the early 2000s. I believe the years between 1998 and 2002 were an experimental year for cinema where they just threw everything at the wall and see what would stick. Sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. But it did lead to two of the biggest film franchises of all time, but enough of all that. What is Clockstoppers about? Clockstoppers follows teenager Zach Gibbs, the bike riding, girl chasing, paintball playing, early hipster guy who apparently is bullied by dudes who Frankie Muniz would call scrawny. Tonight, it's just gonna be me and you up there on stage. You're not gonna have your little sister here backing you up. He also has a token black friend named Meeker, who you may recognize as that black guy your friend says they know, yet you've never actually seen. His family are your typical American family, his mom is a housewife, his sister is a punk who hogs the telephone, and his father is a workaholic scientist who happens to be working on a super high-tech watch that can freeze time and space with the push of a button. Okay, maybe not so typical. Actually, something I really like is that the watch doesn't literally freeze time. It just speeds up the molecules in your body so that you are going so fast that the world seems to be standing still. I don't think time has stopped. I think we're just moving really fast. Sort of a scientific -y way of explaining it. Yes, it's probably bullshit, but if plutonium can power a time machine, I'll believe anything that you throw at me. Zack finds the watch and takes it on a date with the new girl, Francesca, and discovers its power. While well, him and Francesca are having fun, his father is kidnapped by Quantum Tech, the corporation that is working on the system of stopping time, called Hypertime. Zack and Francesca are found by one of Zack's dad's students, named Doppler, who aged 20 years through the use of Hypertime. And the three now have to go to Quantum Tech to save Zack's dad before they finish the technology and take over the world or something like that. So yes, this movie is cliche and wrapped up in every early 2000s kid movie trope, but that's one of the reasons I like it. This movie wasn't that well received by critics, and even today when people bring it up, it's very love it or hate it. And this movie, more than any other that I've reviewed on Nordy's Forgotten Flicks, I can understand why people wouldn't like it. This is meant for people who were between ages 7 and 14 between 1998 and 2002. Some of the staples include teenagers going up against the big evil corporation, skateboards, and other EXTREME sports, DJ contests, And of course, a crap load of awesome music. I love the early 2000s pop and punk rock music, and this movie features a lot of it. Smash Mouth, Blink-182, Simple Plan, Nickelback, okay, maybe not all of it is good, but most of it is. But being a nostalgia trip isn't all the movie has. How about the actual plot? I'll admit there are a few problems with the story, but there is one thing you cannot deny about this movie. It takes full advantage of its concept. I hate when a movie has a really interesting premise and then spends the whole time not doing anything with that premise. Clock Stoppers doesn't do that. We have a movie about a couple of teenagers who have a watch that can stop time. Let's have fun with it. And they do. They use it the way you would use it. To fuck with people. In fact, I'll just show you my favorite scene right now. It's when Zack and Francesca use the watch in town to get back at a bunch of assholes. Oh, there's that woman who's always giving me parking tickets. Look at her. She writes them before the meter even expires. She has offended my sense of justice. Oh, it looks like we got our own little Picasso here. Well, he's about to enter his blue period. <laughs> Ooh, nice nose ring. I think that's Meeker's bike he's stealing. This guy promised me that he'd hold this car for 24 hours. Hmm. Well, it's just not right to break a promise. Dude, wait up! Man, don't leave me like 
this. Help! No! No, no, no! No, 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 no! 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 The acting is fine, no Academy Award winners here, but for the type of movie it is, it works well. Jesse Bradford as Zack is likable and certainly pulls off being a teenager despite being in his early 20s at the time. You may recognize him from the 2006 Clint Eastwood movie Flags of Our Fathers, and he was also in Item 47, the Marvel one-shot that came out with the Avengers Blu-ray. Paula Garcias, who would go on to be in the Harold and Kumar movies, does a good job playing the tougher-than-she-looks new girl at the school, and all the other actors do their job fine. I love the effects in this movie. They aren't amazing, they aren't high budget stuff you see in a lot of summer blockbusters, but they're very subtle. Not surprising since the director did a couple Star Trek movies before. One of the best, and one of the worst. I still love that scene where Francesca breaks through a sprinkler while in hypertime, and it also has that weird droning sound that you hear where everything seems to be echoed, and the cool bullet timey effect that happens when they use the watch. Whoa. Like I said, the effects aren't groundbreaking, but they're nice and they work for the film. I mean, look at this scene where Zack bursts through a window while trying to get away from the bad guy. Like I said, the movie is far from perfect. This film has Matrix envy. I mean, look at these two bad guys. Why are they wearing those? They stick out like a sore thumb and they have to be uncomfortable in this weather. Also, I never got how hypertime exactly worked. How is it that the bad guys are able to be in hypertime without the watch? Also, the hypertime is kind of inconsistent. Sometimes objects completely stop and sometimes they are just moving really slowly. And like I said, it's dangerous. It's cheesy in a lot of ways. It is a product completely of the time. Can you fix this? Yeah. But we're gonna need some stuff you can't get at Radio Shack. Dad, what's a Radio Shack? Oh, Bobby, don't you know? So much more than just I'm moving out. There has to be something in this movie for you to like. It's far from perfect, but I still say it's pretty good. It has a creative premise that it takes full advantage of, likeable characters, cool effects, good acting, and an awesome soundtrack. If you have the time, rent it off Amazon or Netflix. I'm pretty sure, at worst, you'll probably just forget about it. Now if you'll excuse me, I have some assholes who conned me out of a hundred bucks to take care of. So thank you all for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye. All I wanna know is, do you wanna come with me?